good day dear students welcome in the kumbharsal class of physics dear students we know what is a motion motion is nothing but the displacement of an object from one point to the another point with respect to observer now again we know that the motion is generally divided into different types the first is linear motion if path followed by the body is a straight line then motion is called as linear motion the second is periodic motion any motion repeats again and again in equal interval of time along the same path such a motion is called as periodic motion now third motion is known to us what is a circular motion circular motion is nothing but the motion of an object along the circumference of the circle is called as circular motion now the third type of motion sorry fourth type of motion is rotational motion what is rotational motion the motion produced due to the torque or when the torque acting on any body then body possesses purely rotational motion now we discuss the fifth type of motion and this fifth type of motion is nothing but the oscillatory motion or oscillations dear students we know that the two best examples which are occurs in a daily life needle of the sewing machine is known to us this needle of the sewing machine performing up and down motion about their equilibrium position again we know that the simple pendulum this is a best example of oscillating motion here simple pendulum or the bob of the simple pendulum performing to and fro motion about their equilibrium position here simple pendulum and the needle of the sewing machine performing a oscillatory motion now dear students this oscillations or the oscillatory motion is generally divided into two types one is linear simple harmonic motion and the second is angular simple harmonic motion now what is the linear simple harmonic motion let us consider there is a one spring mass oscillator or there is a one wooden block having mass small m which is connected by the spring now whose one end of the spring is fixed to the rigid support and the another end is fixed to the mass m now pull this wooden block towards the right hand side and release it what happen it performing a to and fro motion about their equilibrium position now physics says that here this body or the spring mass oscillator performing oscillatory motion along straight line path means here body follows a straight line path such a motion is called as linear means straight line simple harmonic motion means here time remains constant and it performing up and down motion or to and fro motion about the equilibrium position hence it is called as linear simple harmonic motion now again we know that when any body performing a linear simple harmonic motion then there is a necessary a force and this necessary force is nothing but the internal restoring force which is denoted by small e f this small e f is always directly proportional to displacement means see this is a diagram here this ball uh, wooden block performing to and fro motion about their equilibrium position then the o is mean position of the oscillator a is amplitude of the oscillator which is along the positive x axis and the negative a this is a amplitude along the y axis now consider any arbitrary point p consider any arbitrary point p which is placed on the straight line path of the oscillating motion minus a to e now this point p is situated at a displacement x 
and this displacement always measured from its mean position. Now physics says that this displacement and the force acting on the body both are directly proportional to each other. Again here this oscillatory motion says that the internal restoring force acting on this body is always directed towards the mean position means this force internal restoring force and displacement both are opposite to each other means i repeat the definition of linear simple harmonic motion what is a linear simple harmonic motion the to and fro are up and down motion about their equilibrium position in which internal restoring force is directly proportional to displacement and the acceleration produced in the linear simple harmonic motion is also directly proportional to displacement and the direction of force always directed towards the mean position such a motion is called as linear simple harmonic motion and the best example of linear simple harmonic motion is nothing but the this oscillator or the simple pendulum now dear students this internal restoring force is directly proportional to displacement and the negative sign indicates that the force and displacement both are opposite to each other now to remove the proportionality there is one constant is used here, and this constant is nothing but the force constant and this force constant denoted by small k hence the f is equals to minus k into x but we know that the newton's second law and the newton's second law says that the force is equals to mass into acceleration produced in the oscillator is equals to minus k into x since f is nothing but the mass into acceleration now acceleration produced in the oscillator a is equals to minus k divided by m into x now acceleration is equals to minus omega square into x since omega square is equals to force constant per unit mass by putting this value in this equation we get acceleration is equals to minus omega square into x now this equation and this equation gives force and acceleration both are directly proportional to displacement and the negative sign indicates that the force always opposite to the displacement means it is directed towards the mean position such a motion is called as linear simple harmonic motion now again physics says that this is the first type of motion which is produced in the oscillatory motion but again there is a second type of motion of oscillatory motion the second type is nothing but the angular simple harmonic motion if path followed by the body is a curve then the oscillatory motion is called as angular simple harmonic motion means let us consider there is a one bar pendulum which is freely suspended in the uniform magnetic field now this bar pendulum performing oscillatory motion along the thread to along the axis which is passing through the center and perpendicular to the line means it performing a rotational motion and this rotational motion produces angular simple harmonic motion now come to the back in this linear simple harmonic motion acceleration produced is equal to minus omega square x yes? this acceleration gives velocity hence 
the velocity produced in the linear simple harmonic motion is equals to plus minus omega square root a square minus x square since v is velocity of the particle at any point on the linear simple harmonic motion omega is angular frequency and it is a constant means omega square is equals to k by m and the omega equals square root force constant per unit mass now a is amplitude of the oscillator and x is displacement of the particle and this displacement of the particle always measure from its mean position now again here body performing a linear simple harmonic motion then there is always a displacement is produced and the general equation of the displacement is x equals a sin omega t plus alpha this is the displacement of the particle in the linear simple harmonic motion here a is amplitude sin is a function of the trigonometry omega t plus alpha this is a total phase angle produced during the linear simple harmonic motion now t is a time and the alpha is called as initial state of vibration means it is called as epoch now this all these things are known to us because which are studied in a daily lectures of the oscillations now we are studied the some basic concept or the key points of the oscillation to study the cet or the neat or the ge dear students now what are the minimum and the maximum values of x v and a in the linear simple harmonic motion minimum and maximum values of linear simple harmonic motion of x v e means x v acceleration a and the epoch alpha now i am writing here let a particle starts from mid position and at extreme position when particle place at a mid position then alpha is equals to 0 when it reaches at extreme position from the mean position then alpha is equals to pi by 2 radian means 90 degree now the what is the minimum and the maximum values of x when particle situated or the oscillator situated at the mean position then displacement of that particle is always zero but when it is situated at extreme position then its values are plus minus amplitude means plus minus e now what are the velocities values means the velocity at mean position is plus minus e omega but at extreme position velocity of the oscillator is always zero due to which it becomes towards the mean position now what are the values of acceleration the minimum and the maximum values of accelerations are zero initially at the mean position acceleration is zero but at extreme position its values are minus plus e omega square where e is amplitude omega is angular frequency i repeat that again when any body performing a to and fro motion about their equilibrium position then then their minimum and the maximum values of alpha x v e r when particle situated at mean position then these are the values of the x v e 
and at x t position these are the values of y x v y first alpha at a mean position zero at x t position its value is pi by two displacement at the mean position of the oscillator is zero and at x t position its values of values are plus minus y now velocity of the particle e at a mean position always a maximum and it is equals to plus minus a omega and at the mean position sorry at extreme position its value is zero again physics says that acceleration at the mean position always zero and its value at extreme position is minus plus a omega square this table says that when velocity is a maximum velocity is a maximum other values are alpha x and a are zero and and as velocity is zero then other values of alpha x v a are maximum dear students now we find the time period of the oscillator time period in the physics always denoted by capital t let us consider there is one spring mass oscillator means there is one spring whose one end is fixed to the rigid support and the another end is free and the wooden block having mass small m is Connected to the free end of the spring. Now, when we give the small oscillations to this spring mass oscillator, then it performing up and down motion about their equilibrium position. Means this is a mean position of the oscillator. This is a positive amplitude. This is a negative amplitude. Then physics says that here body. Or this spring mass oscillator performing up and down motion about their equilibrium position. Then this oscillating motion gives a angular frequency omega, and omega is equals to omega equals square root force constant per unit mass. I repeat again this. Omega is nothing but the angular frequency of the oscillator, and this is denoted by omega. But again, we know that omega is equals to two pi divided by capital T. Means different form of omega are known to us from circular motion. Omega is equals to two pi by T. Omega equals twice pi n. Theta upon t, v upon r. Now omega is replaced by two pi by t. Hence it is equals to square root force constant per unit mass. Now, now we want to find time period. Hence the time period t is equals to two pi square root mass of the oscillator. Divided by force constant k. Now this is a formula to find the time period of spring mass oscillator. Now inverse of this time period is nothing but the frequency, and the frequency denoted by n or one upon sorry f. I am do not using the f because f is nothing but the force. And here, f is again force. Hence, n is nothing but the frequency, and the frequency is equals to inverse of time period. Hence, take the inverse of this equation. We get one upon two pi square root inverse of this k divided by mass. Hence, the equation of frequency of the oscillator is one upon two pi 
स्क्वेर रूट फोर्स कॉन्स्टेंट पर यूनिट मास डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस टू फॉर्म्यूल है प्लेज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रोल टू सॉल्व द न्यूमरिकल्स विच आर आस्क इन सीईटी एग्जाम डियर स्टूडेंट्स आफ्टर दैट वी स्टडी वॉट आर द वैल्यूज ऑफ काइनेटिक एनर्जी पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंड टोटल एनर्जी ऑफ द लीनियर सिंपल हार्मोनिक ऑसोलेटर एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी नो दैट द जनरल फॉर्म्यूला ऑफ द काइनेटिक एनर्जी इन द लीनियर मोशन इज वन हाफ यम वी स्क्वेर now v is the velocity of the particle or velocity of the oscillator and the velocity of the oscillator is known to us v is equals to plus minus omega square root a square minus x square now put this value in this equation we get plus minus omega square root a square minus x square by putting this value in this equation we get the kinetic energy of the oscillator is equals to 1 half m v square v square is replaced by this equation means omega square in the square root but square root get cancel in the bracket a square minus x square where x is a displacement of the particle in the linear simple harmonic motion a is amplitude omega is angular frequency m is mass of the oscillator half is constant and the k is nothing but the kinetic energy of the oscillator now this kinetic energy also represented as 1 half k in the bracket a square minus x square since k is nothing but the force constant and it is equals to m omega square see this equation omega square is equals to k upon m means k is equals to m omega square by using this equation we put here or we replace k by m omega square or m omega square by k similarly equation for potential energy and we know that the general equation of the potential energy in the oscillatory motion is equals to 1 half m omega square into x square r p is equals to potential energy is equals to 1 half k y square this is equation of potential energy this is equation of kinetic energy hence the total energy of the oscillator or the total energy of the linear simple harmonic oscillator is equals to t equals ke plus p ke plus p hence hence total energy of the oscillator is equals to kinetic energy kinetic energy equals 1 half k in the bracket a square minus x square and the potential energy is equals to 1 half k y square now multiply this inside the bracket we get the total energy of the oscillator is equals to 1 half k a square minus 1 half k y square plus 1 half k y square this is a plus k x square and this is a minus k x square get cancel we get the total energy of the oscillator is equals to 1 half k into y square but we know that this k is nothing but the m omega square now put this value here we get the total energy of the oscillator is equals to 1 half k is replaced by m omega square
into a square. But we know that different form of omega. Since omega is equals to twice pi n two pi upon t. Put this value in this equation, we get total energy is equals to one half by putting this value or uh, replacing omega by twice pi n we get 4 pi square into n square into a square into m see now this equation one half m a square and the omega square is replaced by 4 pi square n square. Now, from this equation, we say that total energy of the oscillator in the linear simple harmonic motion is constant into n square into a square. What it says, total energy is directly proportional to square of frequency of that oscillator. I repeat again, when any body performing a linear simple harmonic motion, then there is always a kinetic energy, potential energy, and the sum of these two energies is nothing but the total energy. Now, Kinetic energy is equals to 1 half k in the bracket a square minus x square. Potential energy is equals to 1 half k x square. Now sum of k and the p is equals to 1 half 4 pi square n square into a square into m. Where m is mass of the oscillator, a is amplitude, n is frequency of the oscillator, 4 pi square and half are the constant. Hence we say that total energy of the oscillator is always directly proportional to square of frequency of that oscillator. Dear students, now we study the composition of two linear simple harmonic motion means Dear students, when two oscillators having same time period traveling along same path but their epoch and amplitudes are different, both oscillators superimpose to each other then there is a resultant oscillations are produced and this resultant oscillations is called as composition of Two linear simple harmonic motion. Let right? consider the first oscillator whose displacement is x1 and x1 is equals to a1 into sine omega t plus alpha 1 and the second oscillator whose displacement is x2 is equals to a2 sin omega t plus alpha 2. Here alpha 1 and alpha 2 are the epoch of first oscillator and the second oscillator and the x1 and x2 are the displacement of first and second oscillator respectively. Now when these two oscillators performing oscillations along the same path then there is a superimposition is produced, our composition is produced. Now, this composition gives us the resultant displacement and the resultant displacement of that oscillator is nothing but the x and the x is equals to x1 plus x2. Now, solving these two equation, we directly write here the resultant amplitude, resultant amplitude produced due to the Composition of two linear simple harmonic motions is R equals square root A1 square plus 
ए टू स्क्वेर प्लस टॉइस ए वन इंटू ए टू इंटू कॉस ऑफ अल्पा वन माइनस अल्पा टू आई रिपीट अगेन द रिजल्टेंट एम्पलीट्यूड प्रोड्यूस ड्यू टू द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ टू लीनियर सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन इज स्क्वेर रूट एम्पलीट्यूड ऑफ द फर्स्ट असोलेटर ए वन इट्स स्क्वेर मीन्स ए वन स्क्वेर प्लस ए टू स्क्वेर प्लस टॉइस ए वन इंटू ए टू इंटू कोसाइन ऑफ अल्पा वन इपोज ऑफ द फर्स्ट ऑसोलेटर माइनस अल्पा टू इपोज ऑफ द सेकेंड ऑसोलेटर एंड डेयर स्टूडेंट्स द रिजल्टन इनिशियल फेज ऑफ द ऑसोलेटर इन द कॉम्पोजिशन ऑफ टू लीनियर सिंपल हार्मोनिक मोशन इज डिनोटेड बाय डेल्टा it is a sum of alpha 1 and the alpha 2 and delta is equals to tan inverse of in the bracket a1 sin alpha 1 plus a2 sin alpha 2 divided by a1 cos alpha 1 plus a2 cos alpha 2 this is a resultant amplitude and this is a resultant epoch or resultant initial phase produced due to the composition of two linear simple harmonic motion dear students this is a basic concept or the theoretical concept of linear simple harmonic motion now we study the examples of linear simple harmonic motion and dear students we know that the best example of linear simple harmonic motion is simple pendulum what is a simple pendulum simple pendulum is nothing but the a point heavier mass suspended by inextensible and weightless string from a fixed rigid support and it moves to and fro motion about their equilibrium position then it is called as simple pendulum i repeat the definition what is a simple pendulum a point heavier mass suspended by inextensible and weightless string from a fixed rigid support and it moves to and fro motion about their equilibrium position then the pendulum is called as ideal pendulum or simple pendulum then dear students we know that when this simple pendulum performing a to and fro motion then it is acted upon internal restoring force now by using this internal restoring force we can easily find out the time period of the simple pendulum and we know that the time period of simple pendulum is denoted by t and it is equals to 2 pi square root length of simple pendulum divided by acceleration due to gravity here l is nothing but the length of simple pendulum and this length of simple pendulum measured from center of mass to the suspension point or this is distance between center of mass of the bob to the suspension point and g is acceleration due to gravity 
2 pi e is constant means this formula of the time period of simple pendulum gives following three laws or these laws are called as laws of simple pendulum the first law is time period of simple pendulum is directly proportional to square root of length of simple pendulum at at constant g means g remains constant then the time period of simple pendulum is directly proportional to square root of length what it says as length of the simple pendulum increases time period also increases and vice versa means length decreases time period decreases second law the time period of simple pendulum is inversely proportional to square root g at constant l or length of simple pendulum hence it says that time period increases with decrease in g or vice versa means as g decreases time period increases or g increases time period decreases third law the time period of oscillator is independent on on amplitude of the oscillator means the amplitude of the oscillator increases or decreases but its time period remains as it is and the last law here bob used let us consider the bob used which is formed by the copper metal copper iron means in simple way i explain that the time period of simple pendulum is always independent on mass of the bob time period is independent on mass of the bob these are the different laws of simple pendulum now the best example again our second example of simple pendulum what is a second pendulum second pendulum is defined as a pendulum whose time period is 2 second i repeat again a pendulum whose time period is 2 second such a pendulum is called as second pendulum now the what is the length of second pendulum hence now put this value in this formula we get the t is equals to 2 equals 2 pi square root l upon g 2 to get cancel is pi remains as it is 1 is equals to pi square root l upon g take a square of both sides we get 1 equals pi square into l upon g hence length of second pendulum l is equals to g divided by pi square but we know that the general value of acceleration due to gravity g is equals to 9.8 and the pi square is nothing but the 3.14 into 3.14 and it is nearly equals to 9.87 now, now 9.8 9.8 get cancel hence the length of second pendulum is nearly equal to 1 meter this is a brief explanation of simple harmonic motion or this is a brief explanation of oscillatory motion mitranno ita parent apan sarva cha sarva oscillation che important point cet point of view shiklelo ahot good day all of you